Hey everybody, this is Nick Chalon. I'm the former Chief Software Officer for the Air Force and Space Force. I'm also the founder of Asage, bringing GPT to government teams and integrating it with custom data sets, live queries to be able to bring these capabilities to government teams and contractors to accelerate your capabilities and save you time. At the time of this recording, we have about 3,400 government teams and 750 companies, both financial institutions and defense industrial-based companies and government contractors that signed up for Assage. We're so thankful in three months to see such massive volume of engagements. And we know you have questions, so we wanted to share lots of insights today and pitfalls to avoid and things to pay attention to. So let's get started. All right, so the first step for you is to go to chat.asksage.ai to go and create an account. So as you can see here, uh, very simple. You go to the website and you register. Make sure you don't lie on the fields here. And if you do have a CAC or a PIV, make sure it's inside of your device when you do the registration here. Uh, but effectively, you're going to put your name, first name, company, email, phone, and uh, uh, select your country. Make sure you read the terms and condition, and then you're going to subscribe. You're going to get a code in your email to validate. If you don't get the code, let us know. We can force your account. So just send us an email at support at assage.ai. We'll be able to help you to validate your account if you have any issue. All right, so now that you have created that account, you can uh, log in either with a CAC here and uh, simply click here after registering uh, first. But uh, if not, you can uh, enter your uh, email and password and uh, we'll show you later as well how to activate multi-factor authentication if you don't have a CAC or a PIV uh, as well. All right, so the first thing you see when you log in is uh, this pop-up here. We always tell you to read it because there's a lot of great insights. Also, when you scroll down, you're going to see uh, all the new features we're adding and a lot of uh, great comments. So uh, check that out. Also, watch those videos uh, if you want to learn more about Assage. And if you have issues, always you can find our uh, Discord community here and the uh, support email and sales email as well. All right, so first, let's talk a little bit about Assage architecture. I know a lot of, a lot of you have questions, and that's understandable. Uh, obviously, first, for us, it was very important to be model agnostic. So we do support OpenAI, uh, GPT-3.5, uh, 4, uh, DaVinci, uh, GPT-4, 32,000 tokens. But we also support Cohere, Dolly V2, uh, Google Bald, and any other large language model that we can use. So... We're agnostic, and the beauty there is the training we do on top of uh, those models is also agnostic. So you can train data and then ask questions to any of these models, and it's going to have the same insights that we uh, taught it. So that's uh, really enabling you not to get locked in to those large language models and uh, try different things and see what sticks. Assage is hosted on Azure Gov Impact Level 5 for CUI. That's where we store all of our data, data sets. That's a multi-tenant stack. We also have an ability to host a dedicated tenant. We'll talk about that later. But the multi-tenant stack is on Azure Gov. And we have our dedicated enclave with Azure OpenAI with a dedicated endpoint that is on the FedRAMP high commercial regions where we brought all the controls to make it capable of doing impact level five work. So while the assay stack is on Azure government, uh, the API for the OpenAI models is on the FedRAM high commercial regions. And we have specific settings thanks to our partnership with Microsoft to do a find forget API. So effectively it's not logging any information. Humans have no access to the prompts and the responses, but also the data is never used uh, to train the model. So effectively when you ask a question uh, to the bot using OpenAI, uh, it's a fire and forget API. So it does not remember what he just said. And that's the beauty of what we built makes us uh, capable of doing impact level five work. 
And the way we make it remember what you ask is by passing again the history of the chat every time we have a conversation with the API. As you can see, Assage has many data sets that we ingest and share across users, but your custom data sets are only visible to you. So if you train the bot on specific topics and create data sets, they are only visible to you and to the people you decide to share those data sets with and that has to be done through us, by the way, for security reasons. But know that when you train the bot on data set, this is not visible to other users. And so effectively, it's almost like having your own dedicated bot data set experience on top of those large language models like OpenAI. Obviously, I care very much about security and data centricity is essential. We're built on top of zero trust. We have this model of labeling data each data set has a label that can be then shared to other users but by default they're only visible to you and that enables you to decide how you uh, assign data and how you cut it into different data sets by creating your own data labels and we'll show you how to do that all right so why did we create sage well you know like everybody we started playing with gpt back in november pretty much october uh, started uh, using it to write our video scripts and that was great. I became kind of a pretty face reading the video scripts and uh, doing our videos and that was uh, exciting but what really got us really excited is when we started to uh, use it for mission work and let me show you exactly the moment where I realized that uh, uh, this was way more than just some gimmick uh, capability uh, writing uh, content for us. In this case, what really got me excited is when we had this uh, data set with Chinese uh, resumes of the CCP teams and uh, it's unclassified and open source and, you know, they have 150 fields of uh, different information. But, you know, what was pretty mind boggling is uh, the volume of information. And if you put this on Google Translate, you get 150 fields and your brain is not able to really understand who this person is it's just too much information and so we'll show you what i did right so we simply did translate and summarize uh, who this uh, person is and this is a json uh, uh, document here um, in chinese so it's not in english other than the the fields names and uh, simply by asking it to translate and summarize uh, and that's really where I decided to uh, make uh, this a company is seeing the, the immense value where now GPT is able to give us uh, a, a clear rundown of who this person is in plain English. And that was really uh, mind boggling. You know, the human brain would not be able to do this simply by translating things on Google Translate, for example. And so as you can see now, we can a pretty much picture who this person is. That's why we decided to create Assage. We realized it was way more than just writing simple things and it was capable of doing pretty incredible things to really augment and empower people to get things done and bring tangible outcomes to the warfighters. You know, for me, it's actually pretty interesting. I don't Google anymore. Um, you know, this is really augmenting our time by you know 80 percent on average a day at least for a developer we estimate you know a 10x ratio uh for teams responding to uh rfps for example we've seen them uh, be able to augment their volume uh by three to seven x on average which is really incredible if you look at gpt and the value it brings to the table it's really almost like a a company as a service capability. What I mean by that is it's able to do pretty much anything. If you look at Sage itself, the logo of Sage was created uh, by the bot. The UI, 90% of it created by the bot, 90% of the backend, 100% of the SQL stuff, 100% uh, of the CI, CD, DevSecOps pipeline, 100% of legal. You know, if you look at all the capabilities we built, really everything was orchestrated and empowered through the use of Assage to improve itself almost like, like an exponential capability. So obviously, 
a lot of people are worried about GPT, a lot of issues, a lot of challenges. Is it perfect? No, obviously not. Uh, but can it drastically improve your velocity and your outcomes? No doubt. And we're just getting started. You know, things are improving every day and it's kind of mind boggling to see all the research coming out uh, from scientists and data scientists on the subject matter. And it's really uh, slowly but surely becoming uh, more and more safe, but also uh, more accurate and uh, factual. All right, so here, let's look at the UI here a little bit. As you can see, we have uh, different conversations and it's easy to rename them. Um, and we can easily do that and uh, delete uh, uh, former chats. Uh, ideally, you want to create a new chat every time you change topic or you swap between personas and models. We'll talk about that today. Uh, you can edit, you can delete. Um, and of course, you know, the conversation is kept, but do keep in mind that because of the token limit uh, of uh, the models, we only pass about five to 10 of the previous messages to the query. So it's not always tracking the entirety of your chat. So try to get things done in as little prompts as you can, ideally in one prompt or two, but don't start following up and keep asking questions. It's always better to get to outcomes in the in the small number of questions. All right, so what is a token? One token is about four English characters, but that changes also with coding and uh, Chinese and other languages. So an easy way to see how many tokens you just entered. If I write, uh, this is a test, uh, you'll see here that the bottom uh, right here is gonna show us that this is 18 tokens of text, right? So this is a good way uh, for you to try to estimate the volume of, of tokens. All right, so let's start with a simple query here. We're gonna ask it who I am um, and see what kind of answer we get just to show you how this works. Of course, we trained the bot on who I was, so it has all that insight. So, you know, what's interesting, obviously, is we get references, so we know where that came from, and we have follow-up uh, questions here, so you could ask, you know, additional questions, like what is the uh, DoD Enterprise DevSecOps initiative that Nick Chalon uh, co-leads, co and uh, uh, this is gonna give us additional insights here and give you additional references uh, for that question as well. So this is a very uh, easy way to to start asking questions uh, Like we talked about always start a new chat if you change topic you can do, do slash new uh, uh, With the command and create a new chat uh, or you can also uh, uh, Clear the chat by doing slash clear as well All right, so now let's let's look at a maybe a more interesting example maybe writing some code so we're gonna ask it to write um, the uh, write the code for Kubernetes uh, Nginx ingress that uh, leverages a mutual TLS authentication to authenticate users with a common access card. And let's see what it's gonna give us. All right, so it just gave us the code of that uh, Kubernetes ingress, and it did add the uh, auth uh, depth and the verify client, which is exactly how you would do this uh, to activate. And the TLS secret will be obviously passing the, the, the root CA with all the DoD certificate here, which is exactly how we actually did build this uh, CAC authentication feature in uh, Sage for the DoD and .gov. So uh, pretty cool, as you can see, it's giving us also some additional information here and uh, you can um, copy the code here and uh, you have a, a copy the entire uh, block here, but you also have a thumb down, down button here to notify us when there is a bug. Don't use it when the answer is wrong. We can't help that, but notify us when you see a bug and there's an issue and you can just click this uh, thumb down button here uh, to help us fix it. All right, so first let's look a little bit at the different models. Like I said, we model not agnostic. So by the time you're watching this video, we may have new models, but at least for these models that we have today, uh, you'll wanna be able to know which one to use. They have different uh, uh, 
uh, price point. So you're going to pay more if you use GPT-4 or 32K than if you were using GPT-3.5, for example. When you buy an account with Assage, you get DaVinci token, which is kind of the middle tier price point. Uh, but these tokens can be exchanged just like a currency into any of these models. So you do buy tokens, uh, 500,000 tokens for the $30 a month uh, account. Uh, but keep in mind, this gives you uh, 5 million token with GPT-3.5, which is way cheaper. It's 10 times cheaper than DaVinci, so you get 5 million token. But now if you were to use GPT-4, Keep in mind that GPT-4 is about five times more expensive than DaVinci or five, 50 times more expensive than GPT-3.5. So you're getting you know, only 100,000 tokens uh, when you have the paid subscription of GPT-4. And GPT-4-32K is nine times more expensive than DaVinci or 90 times more than GPT-3.5. So you need to use the right model for the right job. Uh, DaVinci is going to be less biased, is going to be able to do more things. So when you hear the model tell you, oh, I can't do X, Y, and Z, clear your chat, do a new chat, and try again with the same question with DaVinci, and it should be able to do it. Now, Cohere is another commercial model. It's quite limited, but it, it's a, you know, an option that you can use, and um, it's the same price as DaVinci. So when it comes to tokens, keep in mind you're paying not just for the question you're asking, but also the data we pass to the bot that we ingested, that could be data sets or insights we have, but also the reply that you're getting back, right? So you're paying tokens for all of the above, and we can only estimate what you're typing. We don't know how much we're going to pass in terms of data to that, and we don't know also how much the bot is going to respond to that. So it's impossible for us to predict how much one question is going to consume of tokens. But at least here at the bottom, right? if I copy this text here and I copy and paste it into the, the box here, it's going to tell us exactly here uh, that it's 169 tokens. All right, so when you sign up for a free account, you get 25,000 tokens and you don't get all of the plugins we have. So if you want to pay for a paid account and get the 500,000 tokens, so higher... Uh, limit. You can simply click on become a Sage customer today and you're going to be redirected to our Stripe payment. And you can use a credit card to pay. And for government teams, you can use a, a government purchase card for up to $10,000. So you can actually pay for up to 27 users per team. Uh, so that's very easy to, to do directly there. And reach out to us if you want to do bulk purchases. So you don't have to put the credit card for each account. We can do that for you uh, in the back end. All right, so let's look at one of the biggest impediments that is called hallucination. It's when the bot is making stuff up. It's just uh, creating uh, text and information that is just not accurate. Uh, so let's look at an example and let's create a hallucination here. I'm going to use a DaVinci model because it's more likely to hallucinate. I'm going to say something as simple as, so I'm going to ask who is Austin Bryan from Assage? and provide links with more information. And it's wrong, obviously, because Austin Bryan works for Defense Unicorn and not Assage. So that's going to make it hallucinate. Right? We're misleading it to tell it it's, work, it's working for uh, Assage. And so here, what's interesting, right, is that it gave us links, but these links are not working. And uh, they are hallucinations. So it's telling us, hey, this might be a sign that this answer might be a hallucination. So that's something we built at Assage to try to mitigate uh, all these issues with hallucinations. But let's try to, to ask the same question now on the GPT-3.5 model and, and try to compare what happens here. So see here it's e interesting because it's saying it's not sure, but you can find more information about their website. And it has a wrong page. It's not .io, it's .ai. And so the link is wrong, and so he knows it's hallucinating as well. But at least, as you can see, with GPT-3.5, it's not making things up, saying that Austin Bryan is a CTO of Assage. So to be clear, it's very much less likely to hallucinate when he knows something. So that's why the more we train it, the more data we give it, the less likely it is that hallucinations are to happen. You're also going to see things where 
uh, as Sage is answering questions and making stuff up. Like if you ask it to send an email uh, to somebody, it's going to say that it did, but it doesn't, right? It's not able to send emails. As Sage does not support that today. Uh, so it's a lie, right? As Sage is a text based chat. And uh, we're working on a lot of different plugins. So I'm not, you know, telling you that in the future we may not have an email plugin to email things to people. But right now, that's not a capability we have. So as always, trust but verify. Look at the answers you're getting and try to make sure this actually makes sense. All right. So we have three types of memory, right? Short term memory, long term memory, and real time. Short term is your chat with a bot. That's just the current chat and the history of the chat. The long term memory is stuff you can store in data sets into our vector database on Azure Gov and Pack Level 5. And that is, you know, all the way up to CUI right now. And that is good for things that don't change a lot, like documents, policies, and things like that, that, you know, change maybe once a month or every six months or a year. Uh, something like that. And then you have real-time data. That's where you want to tap into APIs, data lakes, data warehouses. That's pooling real-time data at the time of the query to get the information you need. Something like the weather. If you ask the question about the weather, you don't want to get the weather of yesterday. You want to get the weather of today. So a good example of that is the plugin we made with the METAL, with the FAA to get the weather from an airport. So if I say, what is the METAL of ID in plain English, what's interesting is going to go uh, use the FAA METAL API to pull that uh, reference here that you see encoded, but yet it's able to translate it in plain English because I ask it to do that. And so it gives me all the information here in plain English. That's an example of a plugin we built that's pulling from real time sources to get the information you need and then use the bot capabilities to read that back to the user in the plain English uh, context. So we talked about the, the token consumption. Like I said, you know, you're paying for both the question you're asking, the data we pass to the model, whether it's real time API like here, or it's simply a data set that we ingested in the vector database, and you pay for the answer you're getting back. Keep in mind that if you don't need to pass data sets, you can simply uh, set data sets uh, drop down menu here to none. And that way, uh, by doing that, you uh, make sh you make sure that uh, the bot is not using any data sets from our uh, vector database. So you're not paying for tokens you don't need to pay for. All right, so prompt engineering is going to become the most important skill for most people to get, particularly right now. And so uh, watch our created YouTube playlist of prompt engineering videos to know how to ask a question to the bot. You know, the tone, you can use different words like, you know, concise, detailed, summarize, extract, verbs matter, how you phrase things matter. Uh, Try to get to a desired outcome in one prompt or two maximum. Don't chit chat with the bot. That's not the most efficient way to get where you want to be. And the bot might forget all that past context along the way. So, and if you can't achieve something, most likely blame yourself. So far, I've yet to be able to find the limit of GPT. So it's all about prompt engineering and try to reflect. And for that, you know, we actually created a persona to um, help you with that. And it's called the uh, prompt engineer persona. And I'm going to use an example here. Uh, we have a we have a prompt here. I'm just going to copy and paste this. And uh, uh, I'm going to ask the prompt engineer persona. And I always clear the chat when I change topics. So I'm going to say, um, help me improve this prompt to gather medications and illnesses uh, from um, uh, a veteran medical record. Right. And so this prompt was written to extract uh, medication and dates and illnesses. But let's see if the bot itself can help us improve it by itself and what kind of questions is going to ask us to do that. That's always an interesting uh, subject. So what's the purpose of the summary? Is it for research, legal purpose? Uh, can you provide more information about the medical reports? Are they, uh, are they from a specific time period? Um, this is to uh, be able to file medical claims. 
we need to collect to collect all medication dates and illnesses and the reports of for the lifetime of the veteran so then it's effectively continuously trying to improve the prompt and it just gave me an updated uh, prompt that I could use uh, to get better outcomes and use that prompt engineer persona effectively to improve your questions so that you can get the right answer when you're struggling and trying to get things done. All right, so a lot of people ask us about use cases and there are so many, right? It's pretty much unlimited, but we have people on the government side in acquisition writing RFPs with Sage and RFIs. We have people on the contractor side uh, using Sage to respond to RFPs. And uh, we have people grading bids and categorizing, labeling data. It's very good at labeling content, coding, translation, reviewing code, uh, commenting code, using uh, DevSecOps, engineering uh, principles to write YAML, uh, summarization and sentiment analysis, and so on. Uh, sky's really the limit. Let me show you how I wrote one of my uh, bid answer by using Assage. And this was a bid f coming from uh, Tradewinds, which is a great uh, DoD CDAO uh, program. And, and so all I did, which is pretty uh, incredible, I copy and paste the bid. I'm gonna show you my prompt here. I'm gonna do a new chat and I'm gonna put contracting uh, officer and I'm gonna use a GPT-4 32K uh, uh, module here and uh, the body is already aware about Sage but it's always good to give it a little bit more context so I'm responded as a Sage to this bid from the government and so I'm just giving a little bit of context I'm the CEO of as Sage blah 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 context about as Sage so I wrote a couple of sentences about as Sage here uh, based on the RFP and things I thought you know the 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 product and the, the company would bring to the table. And then I wrote the government RFP information. I just copy and paste the PDF. Nope, no formatting, anything. It's just the, the entire PDF here. And then I said, end of context. And I said, action, make sure to follow all their requirements so the paper will be graded as acceptable by the JFAC and follow their proposed order, answering all the required questions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I said, you know, fo following their specific guidance, write the two page, 10,000 character detailed discovery paper to show how Assage meets all the RFP requirements. And he gave me this, you know, perfect thing. I tweaked a little bit, a few paragraphs and something that would have taken me probably a day or two uh, took me 37 minutes. All right, so other field here is uh, temperature here and that field is important. It's uh, enabling you to uh, customize the level of randomness in the generated text. So if you want to stick to facts, you probably want a temperature down to zero. But if you want it to be more imaginative, uh, you can increase that to 0 0.5, maybe all the way to one. But you know, if you want to stay to facts, stay to uh, down to zero. So the live query is also essential. You know, as you probably know, um, the the large language models are trained at specific dates and times, and they don't know what happened after that. So if I were to ask who is the governor of Arkansas, well, it's going to be wrong because it's going to be stuck in time. So it thinks it's Asa uh, Hutchinson, and that's wrong. But if I clear the chat, and don't forget to clear the chat between the queries, if I do the, the live queries now, it's going to pull from Bing and Google and is going to give us now the right answer uh, because it has the latest uh, information here, as you can see. So always uh, interesting to, to, to look at live queries when you know uh, it's time sensitive and you want to get latest information as well. All right, so now let's look at personalities. Uh, we have a lot of options here going from an accountant to a contracting officer to a decoration writer to uh, an electrical engineer, a DevSecOps engineer, to a legal assistant, of course, read all, all terms and conditions. You need to always validate legal uh, and medical information with a, a professional. Um, but as you can see, we, we have a lot of customized personas all the way to a program manager, uh, an officer, uh, performance report writer. So that really helps you uh, customize the tone of the bot, the knowledge of the bot, but also sometimes the formatting of the answers. So if you want to have a specific 
uh, format. We can create customized uh, personas for you to follow maybe a specific templating that you have to follow in your responses. And so that, that really opens the door to a lot of possibilities by creating custom personas as well, which can be created on a per user basis as well. All right, so don't forget to clear the chats between personas and also uh, between models. Otherwise, uh, the bot might get confused. Uh, now, let's look at data ingestion. So first of all, we have a lot of parsers, uh, PDF, HTML, uh, ingesting YouTube subtitle from videos, uh, structured, unstructured data, you name it. We have uh, some parsers that are all accessible to you directly. So you may have to reach out to us if you have questions about structured and unstructured data ingestion. We can tap into APIs. We can do a lot of different things. Uh, we're bringing a lot of different plugins to life for our paid users, including PDF, Word, PowerPoint, parsers. And plugins will allow you to visualize the content, but also train it. In, in specific data sets and even summarize it if it's too long. And so a couple of plugins, as example here, we have this uh, import chain for text plain content. So in this case, since the size of the content could be hundreds of pages and uh, we limited in number of tokens, we cut it into chunks. Then we train the chunks into the data sets. And then what we also do is we, we uh, propose to you to summarize uh, the content into summaries and train the summaries into uh, the uh, data sets as well to have uh, different uh, versions of that content uh, for querying it to find uh, better uh, results. So if you were to uh, use a book as an example, if you try to ingest a whole book, it's not going to work. It's too many tokens. So we would cut it into chapters, then do a summary of the chapters, and then do a summary of the summaries to get a summary of the whole book. So then we can ingest the, the whole book. And then if you have questions precise about one chapter of the book, it would tap into the precise chapter. But if you have broad questions, it will tap into the summarized versions. So this book, plugin here helps you do that. Now, another example that's interesting is let's say you ingest a, a, a database of resumes, right? You have 4,000 resumes. Uh, the way we pass data into the model, we only pass maybe four to five results from the vector database based on the query that you, you're typing. So it's not going to go through all 4,000 uh, results. So if you were asking, you know, who is Mr. X? That's going to work pretty well because it's going to look at the closest results to Mr. X and he's going to return that information. Uh, and uh, that's going to very much likely to be correct if it's in, in the database, obviously. Uh, but if you were to ask, you know, how many uh, of these uh, users uh, know how to code in Python, for example, it would only give the top four results. So it would not be accurate because there might be more developers that can write in Python. So that would be wrong. The way we would have to ingest this instead, it would be to ingest with categorization uh, by programming languages. So we could also have a separate entry uh, for these uh, uh, categories of results. But you could also connect to a database or an elastic stack or a, a Postgres database, for example, and then the bot could convert that query into a SQL query and get the results back as well. So many people think somehow that they need a lot of examples to train the bot. That's actually not true. You only want one or two. You only want to train the right examples, the right information for the stuff you're trying to achieve, giving it the information it needs to give more context, more information. So don't give a lot, just give what you need and you don't want it to get confused. Don't forget, we only pass the top four results. So if you give too much information, it's not going to work. We also truncate the top four results to 500 tokens per result. So you don't want to train um, uh, results that are more than 500 tokens. You want to cut it down to 500 tokens, maybe summarize it, or maybe cut it into multiple pieces. Uh, that's how we automate that for you inside of the plugins and the summarize plugins and the data ingest plugins. Now, what's also pretty exciting with these plugins is we have this uh, plugin here with uh, this example, which is an admin plugin that you won't be able to see, but this is connected to our Sage database. And what's pretty amazing is I can ask questions in plain English and get the results in real time. And just to show you what that looks like, uh, we have a couple of results here uh, that are old, but uh, uh, how many users have signed up in the month of April 2023? And uh, it gave me the answer right here. 
so it's converting this question into plain uh, from plain English to a SQL query. And then what's interesting is sometimes the query is wrong, and so we get an error message, and so we tell the bot to self-reflect and and improve its own SQL query uh, by giving it the error and fixing it, and then it fixes it behind the scene. You don't you don't see any of this. And it's uh, uh, you know giving us the right answer, and so this is really a game-changing capability. But as you can see here, if we ask, show me a table with the top five users who consume the most total tokens in April 2023, it, it knows it needs to give us a table, so it's going to give us a table. But when I ask it to add first name and email, it can automatically add uh, those results. So that's a good example of a plugin that's tapping into a live. Uh, database to pull the results and format it in the right way uh, to back to the user uh, to be uh, as efficient as possible. All right, so let's take a look at the data sets here. And um, like we talked about, by default, it selects all the data sets, but you can also put none if you're not using any of the trained data sets we have and you just want the, the default large language model results, you can just set it to none so you're not paying for those tokens. Uh, but then we have ingested a lot of different information from acquisition.gov and, and DoD and Air Force and uh, some of my content as well. But then you can create your own data sets and that really opens the door to your own customized content, uh, which really uh, enables you to uh, ingest your own data as well. Uh, you can decide who you share those data sets with and you have to reach out to us to share it with another user in your team, for example, so they would be able to see uh, different data sets and you decide how you cut your data and, and ingest it into which data sets, just like labels. And so uh, it, it is uh, very simple to, to create a, a data set. We're going to show you how easy it is now. Uh, we're going to do add data set, um, make video. And this is creating this, this data set, so it's done. And I'm going to do a simple training just to show you how easy it is. And, and keep in mind, we have a full API uh, for a paid, paid user, and you can reach out to us to get full access to that API. Uh, but if I, if I now want to train uh, that Nick Schillens, um has a dog, and uh, the dog's name is Monk, uh, and, he, and, and uh, uh, he is a French bulldog, um, now I simply train this and it took me 21 tokens for that training. And if I ask, um, um, does Nick Chillon has a dog? And yes, it says a French bulldog named Monk. So now he knows, um, and it's as simple as this train command. Of course, you can ingest much larger, uh, uh, you know, documents and things. Keep in mind each chunks have to be under 500 token so we cut it uh, for you using the data ingest plugins so you can do that with a plugin you can do that with the api all just with a command line here and you see how simple it is now if i want to look at the data we ingested and i want to find it into my data set i can simply scroll and i see here uh the the training i, I just did into the data set and if i want to delete it all i got to do is take the id and delete it here this item has been successfully deleted. So now if I clear my chat and I ask, you know, does Nick has a dog? And he says he's not sure. So. so like we talked about, when you create an account, you don't have access to all the, the paid features. Uh, but if you pay 30 bucks a month per user, you get access to 500,000 tokens uh, for querying of DaVinci model. You also get 100,000 token of uh, of, of uh, training, uh, but then you also have a $50 plan for 1 million DaVinci token uh, and a $90 uh, plan for 2 million uh, tokens per user per month. So that's uh, uh, more uh, capacity if you're doing uh, bids and larger documents. So reach out to us to upgrade uh, for these accounts. All right, so let's take a look at some of the account settings that we have here. Uh, I can see my uh, first name, last name, company, my, I can set up my phone number. Um, but more importantly, I can see how many tokens I have for querying, or how many I consume this month, how many training tokens I have. I can see which data sets I have access to. Uh, but here is how I can click to activate my MFA option. Uh, it's gonna use a QR code with Microsoft Authenticator uh, to register that. But you can also see here the button to register your CAC to your account for your PIV or your CAC to work with your account. If you do not register, 
with a CAC in the device. If it says CAC not found, that means your local proxy is blocking your CAC and you need to create a local IT ticket to your support team to uh, ask for a whitelisting of your CAC pass through uh, for the domain uh, star.assage.ai star.assage.ai to be whitelisted to allow the CAC pass through to flow to our website otherwise it's being blocked by your proxy all right so another feature we built is the prompt template and here you're going to find pre-defined uh, templates for prompts for different topics for acquisition and all these different personas um, and we can add more more uh, templates obviously but here are some example of how to do different things and what's even more exciting is you have your private prompts so you can store your prompts and create new prompts to reuse them so you have to remember how you ask a question so it's as simple as uh, writing a title description in the prompt and picking the persona you can also share it with others if you want people to benefit from your research you can just click public and anyone can see those uh, those prompts so that it helps you really reuse uh, prompts across uh, use cases now another uh, amazing uh, set of features are the plugins we've been building and, and we're releasing more and more plugins. So by the time you watch this video, we're gonna have more plugins. But here you see our, our Metal plugin. Uh, we released this amazing Git, Git repo plugin, which effectively scans a Git repo that you give it. And it's gonna look at every file and see, uh, look for improvements, both in performance, quality, and security and, and create a, a merge request with a new branch with all the proposed changes for you to review so it's kind of a free audit uh it can do it pretty much in any programming language and it's a game changer not every change is going to be good but it's giving you a lot of great insight so uh, try that out uh, we have the commenting code uh, emotions to pull emotions from content evaluating code uh, importing uh, chain which en enables you to import text so you copy and paste a pdf or whatever document and it's uh, gonna import it, summarize it, and train it into a data set of your choice. We have this amazing PowerPoint generator, which effectively you ask the bot to write a, po a PowerPoint of X slides, maybe five or whatever, about X, Y, and Z. And it's gonna create the Python code to create the, the PowerPoint. We have a Python sandbox to run the code, uh, get the PowerPoint back, and uh, give it back to the user seamlessly. It's kind of, uh, kind of mind-boggling. We have the sam.gov search, which helps you search uh, for bids on sam.gov. Split text lets you cut text into chunks. Uh, summarize lets you uh, uh, take a long uh, piece of text, could be hundreds of pages, and cut it into uh, summary chunks and then summarize the summary of the chunks. Uh, we have the medical version of it, which is kind of the same concept. We have the summarized website. Uh, which is also awesome, which lets you put a URL and get the summary of what's inside of that page. Um, and then we have the train content into data set, which, you know, is also used into the import chain here, but it's directly ingesting into a data set. It's not cutting it or summarizing it for you first. So you probably want to use import chain if you have a long piece of text. Only use the train content into data set uh, for text that's already uh, short and uh, to the point. So the beauty with plugins is also the ability to um, do agents and complex chaining. That's a good example here to take a look at. We're gonna take a piece of text and I have this uh, article that I wrote uh, on LinkedIn recently about, uh, about AI. So we're gonna use that uh, to, um, uh, to try to see how this uh, capability can take a long piece of text then uh, cut it into uh, chunks and give you uh, the ability to uh, ingest this into your um, data set. And so I'm gonna copy and paste my article um, right here. I'm gonna leave the default of the summarization and the cut, and I'm gonna wanna train it into my uh, Nick uh, video uh, data set. And so it pre-populates my, my prompt here I just have to click uh, send. And so what this is gonna do first, uh, this has um, split the text into chunks. So I have my different chunks already uh, ready to go. Uh, chunk one, two, three, four. It's asking me, do I wanna train each chunks into uh, the, the, the video uh, data sets? I'm gonna say yes. And now what's gonna happen is um, it's, it's training and it's ingesting 
each of these chunks, which is on average 340, 350 tokens, perfectly under the 500 uh, limit. Now it's asking me, hey, do, do I also want to summarize this original content? So I'm going to say yes. So what's going to happen here is going to take the, the text, the long text, and summarize it so that I have a summarized version of it and it's going to give me back uh, that summary. Another little hint, when you use a plugin, uh, make sure that you pick the model that you want to use because it's going to use the model you specify here. So use GPT-3.5 if you, if you don't need uh, something else or GPT-4, uh, but be careful, you know, only use the right model uh, when you run your plugins so it uh, is going to adapt to the, the token limit of these, these models. So here I got my summary. So it gave me one, two, three, four pieces of, of summary of my article into much shorter chunks uh, that are much easier to to uh, summarize. So now I can decide if I want to also train the summaries into my data sets and I'm going to say yes. And now uh, my uh, data sets have ingested now 180, 150, 90, uh, 215 tokens here. Um, so now this summarized version is also in my uh, training. So now, depending on the questions I'm going to ask, it's going to pull the best results based on this article that I just ingested in a second. So as you can see with the chain, first it cut it into chunks, trained the chunks, summarized the article, trained the summarized chunks into the data set, all seamlessly, all uh, with a, 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 an agent plugin. And so we can build these for you to effectively automate a day of work or a whole set of, uh, of steps and stages and conditions and decision trees to uh, uh, really automate a piece of work. Another uh, good example that we, we have built is the go no go flying decision with the Air Force and it's effectively tapping into 20 uh, APIs from the FAA and Air Force and gathering all this icing weather data uh, to help the pilot make a flying decision and so that shows you also the the, the beauty of of the decision tree by by uh, aggregating and putting data from different sources all into uh, the single uh, place in sage to help make the right decisions and so that's also a great example of a plugging agent that could be a, a game changer all right so we talked about this but uh uh, we have obviously this multi-tenant stack on chat.asksage.ai. Um, you know, hundreds of, of and thousands of people on this. But we also have the ability to host a dedicated enclave for you on your dedicated uh, Azure Gov enclave. So reach out to us for these. That's good if you're, if you're getting up and you have maybe uh, already a lot of users on the multi-tenant side and you want to get a dedicated enclave uh, maybe for security reasons or whatnot. We don't think it's necessary, honestly, when it comes to security, but, but some people feel better having a multi-tenant stack and we can do that. And that way no one else has access to your data uh, other than you inside of your enclave. Now, a lot of people ask us, what are we working on when it comes to air-gapped classified work? Well, OpenAI is now bringing their uh, API model anytime soon on the high side, but we do have partnerships with companies like Cohere and Databricks and others to bring their uh, large, language, large language models to uh, uh, the classified side. So we have an engagement with Microsoft and one with Amazon uh, on the secret and top secret fabric to bring large language models and fine tune them uh, for different use cases. But keep in mind, those models are not as good as OpenAI. And so it's pretty tough, uh, not very good at coding either. So you know, very limited, but that's the best we can we can do now on the high side. And Sage is agnostic to the model, so the more model come, uh, the more we're going to be able to bring these options to the table. All right, I hope this was uh, helpful to you. Uh, if you want to come chat with us, come join us on the Discord community. We have hundreds of people now on the chat. Uh, always great to share insights and ideas and ask questions. I hope uh, this get got you excited to come and uh, try Assage and see what it can do uh, to augment your time and your capabilities. And if we can not help you, uh, reach out to us at uh, sales at assage.ai and we'll be happy uh, to answer any of your questions. Stay safe. See you soon.